Hello YouTube, my name is Hans and welcome to my channel and this episode of Darktable Insights. This is an introduction to Darktable, one of the best free tools for organizing and editing your photos. Today I'm going to show you how you can edit a photo in Darktable from start to finish. So come on, let's go! Right. So now we are in the dark room module of uh, Darktable with an image of Corbier Lighthouse in Jersey. So the first thing I want to do today is make sure I use the most screen space, especially since this is a uh, vertical image. So I'll press F11 on my keyboard to go full screen, then I'll click on these uh, small, the small uh, rectangles to get rid of some more of the interface, like the film strip. And there we are. Now first of all we can take a look at the history. We see that uh, there are some things applied by default to the image, which is uh, orientation, also a little bit of sharpening, and a base curve. The base curve is just uh, an automatic attempt to uh, mimic the camera JPEGs. So I get a little bit the contrast and uh, we can start off quite close to uh, what the JPEG would have been. So in the histogram we can see that uh, there's a lot of space to the right of the histogram curve. So uh, this means that uh, our image is a little bit dark. Therefore we go into exposure and we drag the exposure slider a bit to the right to brighten up the image. We also take this black slider and increase the contrast. Right about there I think to start with. Then I want to tackle the, the sky. It's quite washed out but you can see a little bit of structure in the clouds. So we need to enhance that structure a bit, make it a make a little bit more drama. I'll do that with the shadows and highlights module, which we find in the basic group. And first of all, I want to mark that as a favorite. So we have shadows and highlights here. Come into this little menu over here and mark it as a favorite. Then we go back to the favorites group and it appears here. So click on the header of it to go into it. And uh, you can see it's uh, not enabled yet. This little power button is gray, so it's switched off. But as soon as we drag the sliders, it switches automatically on. We drag the shadows to uh, around zero since when we are only affecting the uh, highlights. So I take them a bit further down, right about there. Now you can see this haloing appearing around the edges. So we can take the white point adjustment and bring everything back up again. You see we get the get it brighter but we still keep the contrast. You can take it up to about here I think. Maybe a little bit down again on the highlights and up on the white point. Then we're going to only affect uh, the upper part of the image so we need to mask it. We do that with a drawn mask and a gradient, which we have here. Click in the image to place the gradient and then flip it around. So, and to get rid of that little halo haloing we have, still have, we just move it a bit upwards so that uh, our effect will fade off into the distance. That can look quite natural and it also helps 
with the haloing. So next up is to uh, reduce the brightness of the foreground because it's quite dominating with, its, with these uh, yellow rocks and the bright reflections in the water. I'll do that with a tone curve and also with another gradient. Drawn mask, gradient, click in the image, flip it the other way around. Maybe make the gradient a little bit smaller and just scroll the mouse wheel to to uh, affect the softness. And then we can adjust the tone curve. Make a nice rounded curve to affect to uh, to make the foreground less dominant in the image. Right about there. So. Now I'd like to compare to the original, which we can do in the history stack. Click on original. There we are. Now we can take a snapshot of this, which is just uh, a screenshot of uh, the image area that we can overlay over, over our current image. Go back to the last step. I can choose any step in the history, but now we go for the last step and we uh, turn on our snapshot. Then we can grab the line here and we can compare them. We can also turn the line by clicking on this round arrow and drag it up and down if you want to. Okay, so we can turn off the snapshot again. And uh, the next, the next is uh, that uh, I feel there's a bit of cyan cast in the clouds, especially. So in the highlights, it should be a bit more neutral, or maybe, uh, maybe a little bit of cool, nice blue. So I'll go into the color correction group and the color correction module. Here we can take that white point and drag it towards blue. Exactly right a bit to see what we're doing, that's too much. It's not moonshine here. But a little bit like this. Can turn it on and off to see the effect. Yeah, that's nice. Now the last thing I want to do is uh, noise reduction. That's that's something that uses a lot of power and it slows down the computer so I like to do that at the end. When I zoom in you can see that there's a lot of noise in, in the clouds because of the highlight reduction we did. So I go back to my favorites. There we have a profile denoise module which is sort of a favorite of mine. It uses a profile that's been made for each camera and each ISO value. So the noise reduction is supposed to match the match the noise patterns of each camera. And we just turn that on. And boom, the noise is gone. You can see sometimes Perhaps you see it better down here on the rocks. Ah, you see that it's quite slow. But you see the detail is uh, sort of vanishing. So it looks a bit artificial. That's because the uh, denoising is a little bit aggressive. So we can just blend it uniformly and drag down the opacity a bit. Around 60% I think would do the trick. There. That looks more natural. So. Now I think we're ready.
That's all for today. I hope you learned something from this. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Next time, I'll get into some of the final details of the interface. But until then, is there anything special you would like me to cover in a future video? Let me know in the comments. See you then. Bye.